information that we're actually out live. And I'm really excited about this. Same. You excited? I'm super excited. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me here. This is awesome. So almost there, almost ready. Do, do, do. Sing a Christmas carol. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't want me to sing. <laughs> You've got a good you voice for that. Uh, maybe the, what's the baritone, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we're almost there. It's Friday. Okay, let's go. <laughs> we got the guy. Hey, everybody, <laughs> welcome to our live stream and a whole latte live. I have Sapphire <laughs> with me. I'm Mark. Nice, Thank great you. to have you here. Great to be here. Today, uh, Sapphire, you've been a, a working barista for many years at a lot of different high-end local yes. shops. We'll get into more about your background in a second. Sure. But it's going to take us through some uh, basic frothing, right? Yes. We're going to pour some latte art. Yes. Um, we saw a little bit of that. We're going to see a little bit more in a second. Um, while you're here, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we have more of these great technique videos, the live presentations we'll be doing if you're trying to learn stuff. Also, check the description in this video. We do have our $500 shopping spree contest going on right now. Um, we've got, you know, when, when you purchase from us, we've got always 2% back in latte rewards, extensive support for all the stuff we sell. Either by phone, you can call people here and get advice. Talk before, to a real person. <laughs> right? Uh, so you get some expert customer service and technical support. We've got our great wiki. Um, there you see all our all the all the reasons why our, the the U.S. based customer yes. support. That's getting rare these days, right? Definitely, uh, we're pretty the, lucky. <laughs> yeah, the free shipping on any purchases over fifty bucks, and it, on some of our prosumer machines right now, an extra fifty. So, um, let's talk about you. So sure. while while we learn more about you, let's take a look at some of your latte art. You can find Sapphire. Right? Yes, on, on Instagram. At, I am at the underscore rogue underscore barista. And really? I am true to that name. <laughs> yeah, you are a rogue. Yeah. Um, and you've got lots and lots of pours there. Yeah, lots I've of got other a cool bunch stuff. of different uh, latte art videos that I post stuff uh, fairly frequently. Not right now because I'm sort of taking a hiatus to focus on some other projects that I have going on, but I will be back posting those latte art videos. Well, soon. tell us about that. So, what's <laughs> yeah. your background? Where'd you come from? Sure. And, you know, what's the next step for you? Yeah, um, so I started out in coffee at a national uh, or regional coffee, or sorry, guys, <laughs> <laughs> at a regional coffee. Uh, Wegmans? Yes. Right? Thank Wegmans. you. Getting like, nervous. <laughs> if you're in the Northeast, you know Wegmans, yeah, you, know you Wegmans. want Wegmans, Yeah, right? so it's, it's a great so. supermarket chain that I used to work at, and I started out in coffee over there, and basically when I couldn't learn any more from what they had to offer, I just kept seeking out opportunities with mm -hmm. other local areas. Um, I've worked for small mom and pop shops, I've worked for chains, I've worked for specialty coffee roasters, and I've dabbled in many different areas in the coffee industry. So cool. So you, yeah. you've been behind a bar like daily for, yes, for, for several years. years. And yes. So cool. So let's let's get right into frothing, sure. right? And we're gonna we're gonna do it here on a La Marzocco GS3 yes. to start, right? It's a great machine. One of my favorite home machines and ever. So we're gonna we're gonna make some espresso too, so we can pour. Yes. Um, and you like to you like to weigh? I like to weigh everything just because yeah. I'm I'm a geek, uh -huh. <laughs> and I really want to know like what's going in, what's coming out because it's really the best way to get to know your coffee and have consistent results. And that's a that's an Alconi Vario K30 grinder. You're using a little over. A little over. A little over. Skim it off the top. What, uh, so what dose are you going to use here? I'm going to use like 18 grams 18 and I grams? skim too much off. <laughs> okay, so you bump it up, right? Just bit. a little bit. Close. <laughs> Just for, can, for time's sake, we'll say. If you're in good. a shop and, yeah. they're, and, they're, and they're doing this, you know they're serious about their coffee, right? <laughs> That's true. I'm going to give it a little light tamp. Mm -hmm. You don't go hard? Just no, I, nice I mean, especially if you're working in high volumes, if mm -hmm. you're really going hard at it, you're going to hurt yourself. Okay. And I can be the spokesperson for bad wrist. <laughs> okay. So avoiding the, avoiding the workplace injuries. Yes, definitely. Very on. important. So on the GS3, now tell us what's going on there. Now you just... Yeah, so a pre I'm giving a little pre-infusion for about eight seconds, and I'm going to kick it at full. Mm -hmm. So that's a paddle group machine, so it you can is. vary the, the pressure. 
And now we're going to get into frothing. So tell yes. us, tell us some of the key things about frothing. So you want your milk to be cold. Um, if you can have a cold pitcher, that's great too. Mm -hmm. um, that really helps slow down the steaming process, so that way you can texture it and like really extend out um, the the time you have yeah, to work with exactly, the milk. Okay. Exactly. You know, this is a you know pretty much a commercial machine, right? So you got a lot of steam power with this one. Yes, it's wonderful. So I start with my um, steam wand right in the center, and I keep it just at the surface of the milk. And as you can see, it's starting to whirlpool. That's a really good sign. Mm -hmm. I'm not moving my steaming pitcher much. Um, these, these steaming wands are really great at doing their job if you mm -hmm. let them do their job. Um, and you really just put it in there, turn it on, let it do its work. And you should always look for really nice microfoam. It should be uh, shiny, like wet paint. And mm -hmm. that's how you know you've steamed your milk correctly. And temperature-wise. Temperature-wise. Talk about temperature yeah. while, you're, while you're pouring Definitely. here. Definitely. You, you can talk and pour at the same time. I right? think I okay. can. <laughs> So temperature um, should be between 140 and 150. You're really going to maximize the sweetness of your milk between those temperatures. All right, now I can't talk. Okay. Not too bad for being Not off bar <laughs> for a month. But um, what I find is that when you're hovering between the 140 to 150 range, mm -hmm. um, you're going to maximize the sweetness. You're um, not going to denature the proteins. You're not going to scald your milk. Um, when you take it to the higher end of like 160 to the 180 range that some other places might do, um, you start to sour your milk and it just doesn't taste as good. You don't get the right texture, the right consistency, right mm -hmm. flavor. And flavor is super important. You want to maximize the sweetness. So, if, so uh, you know, when you are steaming, I mean, you, you can feel the temperature, right? I yes. Mean, just from experience. Yes, and not everybody has that experience, and that's okay. Um, use a thermometer, and I think it's a really great technique to uh, newer baristas or even home baristas that um, need a reference point to, you know, build up that experience to what the correct temperature is. So uh, use your thermometer, steam your milk, build your reference point for like what 140, 150 is, and then once you, you can understand like what that temperature feels like, then you might be able to not use the thermometer anymore. And my rule of thumb is, is if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot. Yeah, okay. I want to sh show your art again here. Sure, and, definitely. Uh, so that's really nice. So it, more about the, the, the temperature though. I mean, because sure. a lot of places that, I go to maybe some of the chain places and they, they do it kind of hot and, yes. um, and you're just losing sweetness Yeah. when, when you do that. But I, I kind of get this feeling in talking to some people that people who are newer maybe to the beverages are, um, they, they expect it to be as hot as a regular cup of coffee. Yeah, and you really and shouldn't expect that. You want a drink that's drinking, like drinkable temperature, so that mm -hmm. way you can enjoy it right away. Um, there's a, a lot of like consumers that'll come into shops and they'll let their drinks sit because they're assuming that it's gonna be really, really hot. And then they're like, well, why is my drink cold? Well, you let it sit there <laughs> for 10 minutes. You should so a lot you of know, enjoy really it. Yeah. To be, you it know. yeah, enjoy it right away. Yeah. Especially if you're going to like a higher end specialty shop, you can expect to get your drink at drinkable temperature. Okay, okay. <laughs> so let's move, let's move over here sure. and we'll take a look at the ECM Synchronica. Yes. And we'll do, you know, while you're brewing and steaming over there, and I think maybe we have, do we have a question? Is that yeah, just a really quick question yeah. here. Um, someone was wondering what size pitcher you're using over here. That is a 20 ounce pitcher. Awesome, yeah. 20 ounce pitcher. And that's in the cup, I think that's what, like a? A 12 ounce cup. Okay, okay. So I'll get a shot here if you're doing your thing. So now we're here. So this is more, you know, kind of a home setup. I mean, we do carry the GS3, the Malcone grinder. Um, here we got a Chato E37S. You can do the same 18 grams here? I am. Okay. Just half a gram short. I'm not going to make a big deal close about that. For yeah, close YouTube. enough. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Another little light tamp. So what do you, what's your feeling on tamping pressure? I mean, is it a big yeah, deal? Yeah, I think it's a big deal, um, especially if you're working in a cafe, but if you're not working in a cafe, um, 
basically my theory on that is, and you know, it's just my opinion. <laughs> uh -huh. And there's lots of those, Yeah, exactly, right? there's lots of opinions out there. But my opinion is, is that if you're tamping lighter, you can grind finer. Mm -hmm. And when you're grinding finer, you're exposing more surface area of your coffee. Thus, you are extracting more out of your coffee and you're gonna get all those tasty things that you really wanna get out of there. So when you're tamping lighter, you can grind finer. If you're tamping too hard, you're grinding coarser less and that means less surface area of the coffee is exposed which means you're getting less flavor out of your coffee just my opinion makes <laughs> sense. It no, I mean, make it's kind of kind of what I've, kinda I've seen <laughs> over since i've been into coffee yeah. for a number of years here is that the old the 30 pound you know yeah. the hard tamp oh, thing God. is kind of like you kill yourself doing it's going that. away and yeah, yeah if you're doing it, it all day long yeah you don't want to hurt yourself but, okay so let's we'll talk some more about that so, so i'm purging my group head that's really important you want to make sure you always purge your group head before you lock and load mm -hmm. um that gets out any of the old grinds that are inside of there mm -hmm. Now on a dual boiler like this, not so much to affect the brewing temperature, just to get some gunk Yeah, out just to get the, the gunk that's out yeah. of there. You don't want that stuff going back into your, your new tasty shot. Right. <laughs> so I set everything up before I lock and load, so that way when I put my portafilter inside of my group head, I'm ready to pull my shot. You know, this is the ECM Synchronica. I'm going to weigh again here. And yeah, of course. In this machine, we do have a shot timer, although you're usually you're really using weight. Yeah. Wait in time. time, it have a correlation. Okay. Um, can see. I need to clean this. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm going to clean that pitcher out. Let me look at the shot here. So, and now, is, is there a weight ratio that you were looking for there? Yeah, I usually work um, in the... 1 to 1 1.5 range to 1 to 2. Okay. And like, so I, 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 can you steam well on this? And then you, what you told me is you wanted to do, you wanted to show how not to steam, right? Yes, yes, okay. let's do that, all right. Okay. Let's do... Are you, are you going to do the how not to? Yeah, you want to do that? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Sure, okay. So, so what are um, the mistakes? I well, one, not purging your steam wand first would be your first mistake. You always want to make sure you purge your steam wand before you steam. Mm -hmm. So that way you're getting out any old milk crud that might be locked in there. Okay, and that purging is just doing That's that. it. Okay, so That's you always want to do that. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, and I, I hear... Oh, oh yeah. look oh, at the oh, bubble! <laughs> You know, you see some people doing this. So none of that. <laughs> you don't need to do that. <laughs> it's kind of like all about finding just the right position yeah. under the surface of the milk. Pretty, Pretty close much. To the top. And not moving it, not having um, your steam wand touching the bottom of the pitcher. You'll get a really loud screeching noise if that happens, and that's one indicator that you're steaming incorrectly um, mm -hmm. because the, the steam is basically just bouncing off the sides of the pitcher, and that's not what you want. You want to create a nice whirlpool, and you, you want the steam wand to do the work for you. You don't want to have to alter that. So <laughs> when I go into a cafe, and they take the pitcher, and they put it under there, and they do this, and then they walk away. No bueno. That's, that's, that's <laughs> no. not good. That's no. not the way to do things, I right? don't think so. Okay. I mean... You do you, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, and we've got a question, Sarah? Yes, we do. We actually okay. have a few. Tons okay. of engagement. We appreciate you guys yeah. tuning in. We will take those yes. questions. Yes. Um, yep. So we do have a question from Noelle um, and asks, any spe special technique for one verse two verse three hole tips? Oh, hmm. that's a good question. I would say um, practice, practice, practice. Um, you know, the one hole tip you're not going to get as much uh, steam going into your milk versus like a three hole tip where you're going to get more of the steam pressure coming out um so you it might take a little bit longer to steam your milk in that sense uh but just practice and get familiar with your your steam hole your do you have a preference <sighs> i mean because here's one here's yeah. one thing that i've kind of heard so like you, you can have a big single hole tip yep and you might get more velocity out of yep. it, yet you could have like bigger three hole tips and get less velocity because it's coming out of three things or smaller three holes. So yeah. not every tip's a little different, right? I, I think so. It's really just practicing and knowing what you're comfortable with. I don't have a preference per se. Um, you know, 
machines like these are really great because they're um, designed to have better pressure and steam a little bit more consistently. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's when you see the steam wands that have the enhancers, the little plastic tips, those, you just don't get the right texture out of oh, those. Oh, like, like the auto frothing Yeah, wand, exactly. Which, we, it, you know, be okay. fair, we carry a lot of <laughs> machines that have those. Yeah. But they but if you want to geek no out, skill and <laughs> yeah. you can get you get a reasonable froth. Exactly. Probably not latte and art. You can do great with it too, but it, again, it's all about practice. Oh, in fact, I want to show <laughs> we do have a piece of video because when we we got together about eight months ago, we brought in a Gaja Classic, which we is did. one of it's a machine we always suggest to folks. And there there you are in the classic. <laughs> um, and we put the la, our, an optional latte art wand on it. You can just take the the auto frothing wand right off of yep. it and steam manually too. And we're going to see that you this was your first time using yeah. this machine, and you were able to pour some art with that. I, I mean, I think I poured a swan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that's pretty cool because this is like you know these are really high end machines yeah. now on a classic. It is it is a machine. There's so many of these entry level machines that are more appliances, and Definitely. this thing's built like a machine. But it's it's one we always recommend to entry level folks. And yeah, these types of machines are, are great for people that are just getting into it and want to like say wet their feet, <laughs> I guess. Right. Um, you can still get wonderful, consistent quality with your milk. Um, it's just, like I said, it's about practice. Right, right, so that's, so here we go, and let's see if, I, yeah, I, I, as I recall, you did get yeah. your swan, and that's kind of like one of your signatures, <laughs> it right? It is, it is, they, they call me the swan queen up here. <laughs> <laughs> now, while we have this video up, we do yeah. have a question um, from Sinan. They were wondering, how do you decide to, uh, when to lower the pitcher when pouring? Oh, that's mm. a great question. Um, that's something that I, I can nice probably slot. explain a little bit more by showing. Yeah. Um, when I start out my pour, so I, I'll get a, I'll get a close yeah. shot of this. Yeah. When I so. start out my pour, I always tilt my cup at an angle like this, and I have my steaming pitcher right, like in the center of the the cup, and I do this little swirly action to incorporate the milk and the espresso all together. And I start out just a little bit higher, but once my milk fills my cup up about three quarters of the way, that's when I dip down. And you want to dip down to the point where it's almost um, touching your cup, and that's when you can really start to dig into it. And as you're filling your cup up more, you should be leveling out your cup so you're not spilling on the ground. So you're slightly, <laughs> yeah, you've got to so kind of level it out. So, that, yeah. so the tilt, yeah, it's, that's the thing. It's a lot about angles. Uh, when you're pouring your latte art, if you were to divide your cup in quadrants, um, depending on what you're trying to pour, if you're trying to pour like a simple heart, you want to stay right dead center. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to pour something like a, a tulip, for example, you might want to start in the, the lower end of the quadrant and like dig in that way so you have more room to build your stacks. For somebody who's starting out, what's the easiest thing to do? Hearts. Hearts? So <laughs> let's, why don't we do a heart, Yeah, let's right? do it. So okay. Can, I, can I, I get you to do one with a 12 ounce pitcher, maybe in a smaller cup? Yeah, or? definitely. Let's do it. And I'm this, up for this, a challenge. This shot is like too far gone, right? Yeah, I mean, I could still use it just so I don't waste something. Oh, all right, but right. I mean, because having a nice layer of crema, right? You want to have a nice coffee you do. too. You definitely do. Yeah. So I'll get a nicer shot. Oh, and the coffee we're using here. This You worked at Joe Bean. I and did. this is They're the, wonderful. The Joe Bean Costa Rica. It's a. Local coffee roaster. Um, you know, tell us about your experience there. Yeah, um, it was wonderful. They really do so much for the community here in Rochester, and like what they do extends beyond even our community, and it goes back to the farmers that they work with, and they have direct trade relationships with Don Roger. Uh, that's this coffee right here. Let's get a look at that. That's <laughs> We are carrying this coffee yep. as well, the Nicaraguan Don Roger, right? Yeah, You're pretty familiar with that one, but it does change, right? Yeah, and every coffee changes based on seasons, just like when you're you're growing produce, for example. Things change based on the season, like how was the weather that year? How was the climate that year? What were their yields? So coffee is, is an agricultural product, so you should never really expect like the same coffee to taste the same way all the time. Right. Um, even from roast to roast, it'll change, which is like fascinating to me. I really love all that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and like Joe Bean does a wonderful job at, you know, roasting and profiling and working with the growers. Um, they're really particular about like their process and their methods and they're fabulous at it. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it's nice. It's really nice to have a relationship with them um, and be carrying their coffees. I'll show you in process here. I talk a little bit about that. Um, to have you know these really fresh, high quality. You know, you, would you, do you call it third wave at this level? You know, or, or is that a thing? I, it's it's a thing, and I hate calling it third wave because yeah. I just want to say it's it's. It's just good coffee. Yeah it's, yeah, it's good coffee. It's it's coffee that's intentional, which okay. is you know. You're, you're putting more into it, more thought into it. And it's not like a mass market product. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's got some it's, care. It's got some feeling behind yeah. it. <laughs> now, what's your, fa what's your favorite? You said you were telling me earlier that you have some <laughs> regions yeah, of the um, world that you prefer the coffee. Definitely. It's, it's hard to like pick a favorite because, you know, I've said this before, picking a favorite coffee is like saying you have a favorite child, and that's just right. not right. They but all have their <laughs> fun, unique qualities. They do, exactly. Yeah. And I, I really love um, Colombian coffees. I love uh, coffees out of East Africa, like Burundi and Rwanda. Mm -hmm. They just have these unique characteristics to them that I really enjoy. So you're, gonna, you're brewing and steaming here. You can do that yeah. in either of these machines. And you're going to kind of watch your shot over there for the weight. And now how's the steaming power on this machine compared to the La Marzocco? Well, um, it's a little, it's a little bit, it takes more getting used to. Okay. Um, there's not as much pressure on this machine as there is on that machine, but it's still a really, con it delivers, does just fine. yeah, it does deliver consistent results. Okay, so we're gonna do a heart this time? Yeah. So tips for doing a heart for first timers. All right, make sure your milk is steamed correctly. Okay. <laughs> so you want, um, my milk might be really thin right now, but that's okay. okay, let's see what we do. Again, hold your cup at an angle, hold your steaming pitcher at an angle, and you're gonna swirl around. Now I'm about three quarters of the way up. I'm going to do a slight pause, and I'm going to dig into the center. And like I said, my milk was really thin, guys. Well, there's your heart. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Even with milk that you know you would have liked to have just a little thicker, perhaps. I would have definitely, but that's okay. Um, it's still going to be tasty. I know that I steamed it correctly. I know that my temperature was at the right temp, and I would always rather have a latte or cappuccino that's steamed correctly, the shot is pulled correctly, that mm -hmm. has subpar latte <laughs> art versus, you know, the most fanciest. It latte always art. tastes the same, right? <laughs> exactly. So even if you don't get the perfect <laughs> exactly. art on there, it's still going to taste good. Exactly. And just means you got to practice some more and drink some more. I need some, some practice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so uh, let me just remind you, you know, subscribe to the channel. We're going to be doing more of this. Happily, hopefully have Sapphire back for some, some more. Um, in the past, you know, we've done some seminars with you yep. where you get, I mean, you do stuff just on different milk varieties. Yeah. And how, I mean, it, this gets really, really quick, right? Yeah, you deep, can really, really quick, geek right? out over it. Yeah. I mean, even to the type of cow that's producing <laughs> the milk, it will make a big difference. Do Cal does California really have happy cows? Is that a thing? I hope Or are you even old enough to know that ad campaign? I, no, I am. Okay. I am. I hope they have happy cows. Okay. Oh, we've, Sarah's got a question for us. So yes, we do. Rusty Simba was asking, um, how do you get microfoam? And Jeremy was also wondering, what's the best pattern uh, to start for a beginner for frothing? Sure, best pattern yeah. to start for frothing is hearts for sure. Um, just because you can, like, once you have the foundations for latte art, you can build upon those techniques to do other variations, of course. And your heart is the one that you, you really wanna nail down first. And it's the easiest, you just, pour into it, let the white build up, and once it builds up, you can just pull right through, and then you have your heart, and it's pretty easy. Um, what was the first question? Um, <laughs> how do you best get microfoam? <laughs> okay, yeah, um, it's really about the position of your steam wand in your steaming pitcher. I always say that um, this little notch that's on your steam wand should be your reference point for where you place your steaming pitcher um, under your steaming wand. Mm -hmm. And you want your milk to be either just level or just above it. You don't ever want the uh, surface of the milk to go too far beyond that because once you, let's, 
Let's just. We just do it. Yeah, let's just <laughs> do it. <laughs> and as it, the milk expands, right? Do you have to lower your pitcher down a little bit to um, hold that position? Or? Yeah, you you can definitely. Okay. So, if this is my reference point, I'm gonna start just about here. And so let me see that position before you. Yep. Get sorry. Going. Okay. Yep. And I'm gonna turn it on. And you hear the ch -ch 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 sound. Yep. That's when, that's that's when it's starting to introduce air into the milk. And so it's kind of bringing it off the surface of the milk a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then the idea is to really incorporate that and break it off. That's right. And that's all there is to it. And you get shiny milk. You're looking for that, you know, the paint, latex yep. paint look yep. to it, and and that. And of course, always wipe the wand down always. and purge that guy out. Because when you when you shut off a wand, a lot of people don't know this, but when you shut off a wand in the milk, it pulls a little bit of it milk does. back it up does. in there. That's why it's really important, like before and after you're steaming, to always purge your steam wand. And over time, that you do that enough, and that milk it gets. Uh, yeah, having clean equipment is so <laughs> important. And yeah. I see a lot of like home baristas that do this that don't really clean their equipment right, and then you know a few months down the line, they're wondering why they have scale buildup or why their steaming wand isn't steaming or there's no steam coming out. Well, it's because you've got milk crud or it in smells there. really funny yeah or exactly <laughs> so it's always important to uh, clean your equipment correctly these mm -hmm. steam tips come off mm -hmm. and I'll show you that yeah these steam tips come off and there's some people that don't actually realize that they mm -hmm. come off but they do and that's you know you want to make sure there's no milk crud inside of there there's no mm -hmm. leftover milk de debris clogging up the holes um, that will definitely impact how you're steaming now, so you've steamed both on the um, on the GS3 over here yes. and, and the Synchronica. How are they different? Sure. Um, this one, I just feel like it delivers a little bit more pressure to it, and I'm able to get um, a little bit more thicker foam than that one. Um, mm -hmm. So you is want it, Is it something that you, you know, do you think you could get there with this one? I think so. It's, it's just, I would just have to you're like just practice. You're just very, very yeah, familiar with this I machine. I am super familiar with right. this machine. I've used it for uh, other jobs that I've had. I've used it in um, other settings as well. And it's always a good machine, always. Okay. Now, let's let's talk the difference between cappuccino lattes. question sure. I get all the time. Yeah. And, and I feel like uh, over the years, the cappuccino's kind of been changing a it little has. bit. It has. How has it changed? Yeah. So. Uh, right now, who knows what's going to happen <laughs> yeah. down the road, but right now cappuccinos are trending more on the thinner side, smaller cups, usually eight ounce cups, and um, they, they look like this. They've just got so really nice micro foam. Um, they're not super foamy and dense. There are still the people that really enjoy a dry cappuccino. and. So Anybody that's out there that doesn't know what a dry cappuccino is versus a wet cappuccino, this would be considered a wet cappuccino because there's less foam to it. Um, dry cappuccinos. So that straight has, layer yeah, of yeah, just all the airy dense froth foam. up top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, when you drink a dry cappuccino, your dry cappuccino should still have micro foam in there. You mm -hmm. might need that's to steam. Uh, yeah, you might need to steam a little bit more milk, but it should still be like really dense, really sweet. Creamy, mm -hmm. fluffy. <laughs> and in general, a cappuccino, right, is going to feature the coffee a bit more than a latte would, yeah, right? Yeah, because Generally there's more coffee yeah, or there's espresso in a. Yeah, there's less milk, so you're going to taste more of the coffee. It's going to be coffee forward versus mm -hmm. a latte, which has a much more higher volume of milk and same amount of coffee usually. Uh, I know some shops pull different amounts of espresso, but uh, at least trending here in our area, uh -huh. it's the same amount of espresso for each drink. Okay. Okay. And we got, oh, question, Sarah? Yes, another question. Uh, just while we're on the topic, we have someone wondering, um, can you show us a cappuccino froth versus a latte froth? Sure. So, do you, so like, I'm guessing like a more <laughs> traditional sort of cappuccino is what they're looking for. I, An okay. airier froth? Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. Okay. I kind of did that on this one right here. Okay. But um, oh. I'm going to go back to this machine. Okay. I like okay. this machine a lot. Okay. Um, so how, so this would, so do you always work with a 20 ounce when you're on the, uh, you know, working? No, it depends on 
my drink. Okay. Um, you know, if I'm making an eight ounce cappuccino, I use the appropriate size steaming okay. pitcher, which is a 12 ounce steaming okay. pitcher, uh, versus like a latte, which I might need a larger pitcher, larger which pitcher. is really important to use the correct pitcher for the correct size drink that you're trying okay. to make. Um, it so I, I, I'm assuming that you want to know how to do a dry cappuccino. Yeah, so yeah, I think that's kind of, yeah, yeah, more the airier, yeah, denser so froth up top. So, okay. I'll do that over here real quick. I am actually going to use a larger steaming pitcher for okay. that just so I can build up the foam. Okay. And I'm just going to slowly, like, as, so as I'm... So tip a little higher... Um, I'm just get more air pulling in, my pitcher down okay. the entire time, so that way I'm building the foam up. Okay. And as you can see, I've increased the volume of... So the milk expanded quite a bit yeah, more than exactly. it Yeah, exactly. So you're just stretching it the stretching entire it time yeah. until you reach your temperature. And then you've got all this nice, dense foam on top. And you really want to keep your foam incorporated with your milk. Um, uh, I prefer Is it, it fair to pour pitcher to pitcher? Um, for cappuccino, if you want a dry cappuccino, I would say you no. You wouldn't do that. No, yeah. but if you want um, more of a wet cappuccino, definitely. Some people okay. use spoons to scoop out the foam, and that's entirely up to you. I don't think that there's a right way or a wrong way. You do what But a really good barista probably isn't ever yeah. going to touch your milk with a spoon. No, not We've usually. been through yeah, that usually. so many times <laughs> in the comments, and, you know, uh, if you're at home and nobody's going to see it happen, then yeah. maybe it's okay. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not gonna if, change the flavor. if you're a home barista, enjoy your coffee the way that you want it, then that's fine, but um, most baristas and specialty coffee shops won't touch it. They'll just pour it. They'll just pour it yeah. if, if they're doing their thing right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So what, so what, what other... Yeah, we kind of went over, you know, how to steam milk badly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, how and so just just you know go over you know really getting it down right, how to get it right. What sure. are the you know the key things to, sure. to make that happen? Practice, 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 practice. practice consistency. Um, like I said, when you're steaming your milk, you want to make sure you start out with cold milk. You want mm -hmm. it to be the higher fat content that makes all the world of a difference. If you're using skim milk, you're not going to get the right type of texture. Skim milk just doesn't, it, it holds its foam pretty well, mm -hmm. but it doesn't deliver that creaminess and um, it sort of starts to break apart once you pour it into coffee. Okay. Um, so like I said, full fat milk is the way to go. Mm -hmm. um, you want to make sure that you're, when you're steaming, you're consistent every time in how you're steaming. So, you know, you don't want to steam a different way one day and then, you know, just be consistent, practice, um, make sure that you're your steam wand is doing the work for you. You don't okay. really need to touch it much because, I mean. Yeah, you're not jerking the pitcher yeah, around. Especially not, you know, with these machines, they're fabulous home machines and they will do the work for you if you let them. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need to move your steaming pitcher up and down and do all these fancy little things that you see other baristas doing. <laughs> like some of them. Like, like or like this. what I said, well, you know, it's funny because I got a comment the other day on, on another video where somebody said, well, I, I go into the cafe and they have this huge pitcher and they steam milk for five lattes at a time. Yeah. Is that, <laughs> um, I've got a feeling you haven't ever done that. Well, like, there, I mean, there is a technique. A There's a very yeah. intentional technique to steaming multiple drinks at a time. Okay. I wouldn't, in a high service environment, you don't typically steam more than two to three drinks at a time, two to three uh, milk drinks okay. yeah. at a time. And you do have a larger steaming pitcher to do that, but then you're dividing your milk up between smaller pitchers to uh, transfer the, the foam. So you get the consistent yes, milk exactly. across. Yes, and, exactly. So. And when you're uh, steaming more milk for multiple drinks, you actually want to steam a little bit more foam than you normally would for a single drink. So that way, when you're transferring the milk between pitchers, you're still incorporating the foam back into all of those drinks. Okay. Yeah. So you do the swans. I Can do. we see you do you a swan? See a swan? Let's yeah. do it. All right. So let's do and again while you while you're getting ready there, I just wanna 
flip the camera over and um, talk about, you know, we're, getting, we're using the Joe Beans coffee here. Um, it's a Nicaraguan Don Rogers. It's a new coffee. We get this very, very fresh from them. Um, and while we're at that, just, you know, remem uh, remind you that, you know, please subscribe. We'll be doing more of these down the road. Um, we're doing a lot of technique videos. Hopefully have Sapphire come back. He'll come back, right? Oh, of course. Okay. <laughs> I would love um, to be back. Also, we've got, you know, check, check the uh, description in this video right now. I've got that 500, you can win 500 bucks to start setting up your coffee bar or maybe add on to it. Um, we also always got on all the purchases, 2% back in latte rewards on some of our prosumer machines. We've got an extra $50 in latte rewards right now. Um, and if you need some advice, if you want to talk to somebody before or after you purchase something, we've got you know, people you can talk to all the times. Uh, they're U.S. based, actually right about 20 feet behind the other wall for me right now, um, taking, taking your calls. Uh, be more than happy to help you out. And just for people who just maybe tuned in or something, so you're using an 18 gram dose. I am. Um, Fairly light tamp. You like the light tamp. I you do. like a finer grind. I have, I have a bad wrist, so I <laughs> yeah. definitely need to tamp a little bit lighter than most other people. And you know, if you're tamping lighter, you're going to change your grind and make it finer, so that way you're still um, having your about 25 to 35 second shot time. If you have a machine that's like this, where mm -hmm. You can control your pre-infusion. Um, you can typically get a little bit more of a longer shot time than you would a machine that doesn't have the pre-infusion capabilities. Okay. So I am go. Now, if you, because you're not real experienced with the ECM we have over here, but when it's when it that's plumbed in, you can do a low pressure pre-infusion. Okay. If you get line pressure there. Um, Looking shot. And again, this is a La Marzocco GS3. Use them with the paddle group. And I hope I'm not putting you on the spot to do, <laughs> to do some, no, some not at all. art here. No, not at all. I need the practice. <laughs> so talk me through what's going on right now when, you, when you're uh, steaming. Sure. So I'm incorporating the air into the milk. That's um, evident based on the sound. It's like ch ch ch. And then mm. after the first, like, Ten, five to ten seconds of that sound, then I know that it should be silent the rest of so the time. Are you so you're letting that air get in, yep. and you're not low, you're not moving the pitcher at all. No. So you're letting not the usually. milk expand and stop the air from really yep. getting in there. I think that's pretty key. I think that's. I think so. It's it's kind of tough to explain to people sometimes. That, it is. It's so much you know, easier to show than yeah. to explain. You got the nice. And the latex paint look to the top of the milk there. All right, no pressure. How, how do you how do you feel about this one? I feel pretty good. Okay. Um, with latte art, it's it's really important to learn how to pour slowly if you want to get into more of the intricate patterns. Take your time. Ah, there's my swan. Nice. I overfilled my cup. I, you know, I bet we got somebody here that might want to drink that, though. I think we do. I am definitely thirsty Sa Sarah's over here. Sarah's in? Okay. <laughs> some caffeine. There you go. Thank you. You're and welcome. did we did we have another question, Sarah? We Where did. Oh, okay. I got excited about my latte. One second. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, Dimitri um, was asking. They were wondering, is it important to make a temperature surf before pulling the shot, uh, given the fact that at the same time you're doing the milk frothing, it could be falling apart with a single boiler machine? Ah. Uh. So you probably don't use single boiler machines. No, like that's a tricky ever. question. Yeah, I mean, you, Mark. Did, you did use the Gaja Classic yeah, that we brought in. Definitely. If you missed that, you know, go back in the video here and you can see Sapphire doing latte art. And I think, yeah, you pulled a shot on it as well. I did. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's the technique is going to be a little bit different on a single boiler. Um, definitely. Because you have to wait for the machine to get up a steam temperature, and you have to afterwards you have to cool it back down. Yeah. And, and there's the whole debate of should I brew first or steam first? Should I brew first or steam? Yeah. What, what would you say if you had to? Oh, that's a tricky question. I've been seeing you brew first. I mean, you could be doing both at the same time, but yeah. a couple times you don't. I You've always been brewing first. I go back and forth. Like, uh, it's it's certainly not the best practice to right. brew first and then steam while you're waiting for your your steaming and let your sh shot sit. That's not best practice, but there. Uh, certainly, if you know um, what 
you're doing and like how long it takes you to do everything there's yeah. certainly a room for you know how much time you have to play with in that regards um because i mean your espresso can fall apart a little bit yeah. or your milk is gonna fall apart a little bit too yeah. right if it's sitting it's, so it's, a, it's a tricky one i the real answer yeah the, get a heat exchange or a dual boiler or a gs3 there and then you, you don't go. have to worry about <laughs> there it you, anymore, go. you do both right? at the same time so, so then um, it becomes a non-issue yeah definitely and, uh, so okay okay any any others how's that how's the latte it's very good it's very good thank okay. you <laughs> this mom makes it that much. <laughs> okay. thank you Sure. Um, so these machines have the temperature set at 200.7 on I'll this one. I'll get a one. shot of the GS3. So on the GS3, the La Marzocco, we were doing yeah, um, 200.3, 200.7? Yeah. On this one, I'm not and really sure what the temperature is on this. So it doesn't show me. So the ECMC Chronica, so it's, it's at, this is at 200. Usually for coffee in any regard, whether it be yeah. espresso or brewed coffee, you want your temperature to be between 195 and 205. Those are SCA uh, standards for uh, you know, coffee temperatures. Yeah. Um, if you go too low, you're probably gonna under extract your coffee and it might be a little bit more sour. Mm -hmm. If you go too high in a temperature, it's probably gonna over extract and be more bitter. Um, coffee gets extracted in three different phases. You're extracting your acids first, then your sugars and your alkaloids. And there's a whole bunch of different things that like are variables in that um, time, temperature, all of that. So, um, you know, staying within that range, I usually s would suggest 200 is Good your place to start. Yeah, because it's, it's right in the middle. It's yeah. you know, smack dab, dab in the middle. And, you know, if you're noticing that maybe your coffee is too sour or too bitter, I, I wouldn't necessarily say changing the temperature of your machine first. I mm -hmm. would say start working backwards and doing other things like adjusting your time, like how long you're pulling your shot for. And I typically would pull a shot anywhere from 25 to 35 seconds. That's a good starting point unless you have and is like that from first drip. Is, that, um, is that where you're As soon as I engage my yeah. paddle or whatever you're using, uh, as soon as I engage that, that's, that's when your time starts. That's when your time starts? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, unless, unless you've got a machine that's got pre-infusion, you, you might start... Take the pre-infusion off You would subtract the pre-infusion okay. from your overall shot okay. time. And is there anything to... So, like, a lot of times I've, I've heard, and, I, and I've used this before myself, that... You, mean, you know, if, if you're going to mess with the brew temperature at all, that maybe if it's a lighter roast, you might go a little hotter, and a darker roast, you might go a little cooler? Is that um, ever Yeah, that? I, that makes sense to me because with darker roast coffees, they're typically more bitter. Yeah. So if you lower your temperature, you you're going to get rid of so some bitter. of that bitterness and have more of the acidity. Okay. Um, whereas a lighter roast coffee might be too sour. So if you increase your temperature, you if you... Balance yeah, it with some ex ex exactly. Okay. But there's different things to do. Like you could also always mess around with your dose size. You could mess around with your time, your pre-infusion. I always, grind, yeah, in your grind. <laughs> there's like all these different variables. It's, and it's, it, yeah. Espresso is a crazy variable game, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And that's the fun part of it for me is yeah. just learning what variables do what. And if you're a home barista and you like to geek out, play with all of the variables and see what effect they have on your, your shots, how they taste. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So can we do another, let's do another, uh, let's yeah, definitely. some more. Yeah, definitely. Gotta clean more my on. steaming pitchers. Yeah. So I'll do that. I'll just give you guys a close look, at, or unless we have a question, I'll give a close look at the machine. So here's the uh, Synchronica that we're using. This is a uh, dual boiler machine uh, with PID. It's showing right now the temperature of the steam boiler, and then it's going to switch to the brew boiler. Um, and when, you, when you're pulling a shot on the Synchronica, you also get a shot timer right there. So that's real nice. And then over here, of course, the GS3. Oh, you got a question? Sarah? Yeah, just uh, a little note. Um, someone was wondering as far as um, how much milk in the pitcher sure. to use. Um, if mm -hmm. you could just focus in on that for this next latte. Sure. sure. I didn't weigh it. You didn't weigh it? <laughs> no. But that's okay. okay. I mean, you don't have to, you don't have weigh, to weigh everything right? to pull a good shot. You just build your reference point for how mm -hmm. much is inside of the basket. 
But if you want to geek out and really dial in your coffee, you should definitely you should weigh everything. Yeah. Um, so like, let's. So take there's a different levels of geek. Yeah. In, in espresso, <laughs> definitely. right? Definitely. Yeah. Let's take a look at these. Uh, the okay. tips of the, the pitchers. Mm -hmm. The tips of the pitcher make such a big difference in how you're pouring and what you can pour. Mm -hmm. um, the sharper pitchers will give you a little bit more control and you'll be able to get finer. Um, so sharper, you mean the point of the spout? Yeah, yeah. Room? And when you're buying a pitcher, you want to make sure like you're, you're buying a quality pitcher where the handle is perfectly in line with the spout. That's mm -hmm. going to make a big difference in how you're pouring. Um, Pitchers that have a little bit more of a rounder edge, it's a little bit trickier to do some more of the complicated pours. Mm -hmm. um, but so they have able to control that yeah, stream of exactly. milk coming out of there. So I would always prefer a pitcher with a, a really sharp spout over okay. a pitcher that's rounded. When I pour my milk into my pitcher, if I'm pouring for a latte or any, you know, any drink at all, mm -hmm. it's usually about a finger width below the notch that's right inside so of there. So where the spout starts yeah. there is, okay, so about a it's finger a good below reference that. Point. And there are steaming pitchers that you can buy by Rattleware that have indicators inside of the pitcher. Have a marking. Yeah, they yeah, have markings. They, um, so you know exactly, exactly what you got in there. Hopefully yeah. that answered the question. <laughs> yeah. We do have someone wondering um, brands you recommend as far as um, milk. Um, well, I don't know where you live. So <laughs> um, that's a, a big thing. I would say stay local and, you know, if you know a good um, farmer in your area, get the local fresher mm. milk that's available. So you let that pre-infuse for a while on the GS3 yep. here and then just ramped it right up to a little fresher. Okay. And again, so like, talk us through the, uh, you got know, the ways we can stop that when you do. Talk us through what you're doing frothing wise again. I'm just holding it right down in the center and I'm letting like a nice whirlpool happen. So you're, so you're just letting the milk expand, you're not changing the position vertically no. of the pitcher at all? Not happening. unless I was trying to have more dense foam. If okay. I wanted a denser foam. Then you maybe follow the... Yeah, definitely. Lower the pitcher as it expanded a little bit. And I probably should have done that because okay. now it's too thin. <laughs> yeah, it's too thin. Okay. But you know, when you're working consistently with coffee and steaming, you'll be able to figure out what pours work best with you know a really thin milk versus a really oh, thick okay. milk. So you can kind of change your yeah. what you might do. So what are you thinking right now? Um, kind of putting you on the spot. I, I know. I am gonna go. I'm going to go with a swan just because okay. I want to show off a little bit. There we go. Cool. <laughs> cool. So I, I will remind you guys that, you know, if you want to follow, I'm, I'm going to tell I have you toned. <laughs> <laughs> sure. um, if you want to, you know, Sapphire is on Instagram. It's got tons and tons of pours there. Um, Request the pour. There, there's some. We're looking at them. Thanks for pulling that up, Taylor. Um, and you follow her at? At the Rogue Barista. The <laughs> underscore Rogue <laughs> underscore Barista. Yes. That one. Yeah. All the underscores. Okay. I like underscores. Yeah. So let's just keep, I mean, these are really, these are really nice. Yeah, I do have a question okay. here, Mark. Question. Um, so that was my mistake um, for Ron. He was actually asking the brand of the pitcher as a separate comment, so I didn't oh. see it. Oh, <laughs> the brand of the pitchers. Yes. Yeah, um, Rattleware is a great brand. Um, their their quality and craftsmanship is great. Um, that's a good starting point. There's other pitchers on the market. There's Barista Gear, which is another really good brand of swimming pitchers. There's also a new one on the market. I believe it's called Decent. Um, they have some of the sharpest tips I have ever seen. You know, I want to, you talk about, tell, because these are all rattler. I want to grab something though, sure. because I have one, I have a couple over here, I thought. I don't know, can, can we find one of those rocket pitchers? Because, sure. you, you know, rocket espresso is, you know, we carry their machines and they have a, yeah, they have a, I want to get your opinion on, Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Just in there. So, what do you think of a of that? Because that looked. I was looking at that. and I'm like, wow, that's really. 
It's a really funky design. Really funky design. So I think the idea. I'll, I'll show you guys that up close, but. I think the idea with these pictures is that like this bell at the bottom somehow enhances that whirlpooling action. Um, I, I can't necessarily. Do you want to give it a try? Yeah, I'll Can give I it a try. Let's spot? do it. Let's do it. Do you mind using the ECM over here? Sure. Okay. Um, oh, I'm you got a shot going over there. Well, but we I'll, steam pull out. I'll pull the shot on okay. this one, steam on that one. Okay. It is a really nice machine. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I would. <laughs> I can't put one in my house, but, uh, you know. I'm sure there's people out there go, that can. If you're going to go, go all the way and, and do this, yeah. And it, honestly, it's an investment. So, mm -hmm. you know, I hate to say it, but the more you spend, the more you're going to get out of it. And, yeah. you know, the longer you're going to have to show for your investment. All right. So I hope I'm not putting you on the spot here because, no, you know. No, please put me on the spot. Okay. <laughs> so first time with a rocket pitcher. Eh, not my first. Not your first. Oh, you have tried one? I have. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're not my first. Favorite? I just don't like the spout. Okay. But I know, uh, I believe Drayton Azalea. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I believe he uses pictures like okay. these, and he's a really well-known barista. Very talented guy. So probably, you know, you could use this if you practice with it for a while, adapter yeah. technique a little bit. I think these pictures are really good at doing tulips. So I'm going to do a tulip with it. Okay. If, if you can. So I have a tulip. I'm going to build my base at the bottom, which isn't a very good base. And then I just keep building the stacks that are going into it. Hey, for the, for the first, I mean, well, you said you'd use it yeah. before, but I'm guessing that was a while even, ago. Yes, definitely. But uh, not too bad. for a first go, you know, hey, not too bad. And I've been off bar for about a month, so, so. but it's just like riding a bicycle. And, you know, when, when you want to learn something new, it's always important to practice, practice, practice. And, right. and you know, if you don't practice, you, you lose it. And, you know, you can, I can personally attest to that. I haven't been behind bar in a month, which doesn't seem like a really long time, but you, you forget motions or you just, you know, fall out of, you fall off your bike. All right. <laughs> well, I think, if, unless we have any more questions, we're going to wrap it up here, or do we have I more? do actually have oh. a couple. I'm sorry. Well, so bring them on. <laughs> um, so Ahmad actually has a great question that I'm sure a lot of people who are uh, beginners and looking to practice um, want to know. Is there any way um, to learn how to make different latte art with other materials besides coffee and milk? Oh, that's such a great question. Yes. <laughs> I love that question so much because I hate wasting things, and so I, I totally understand your concern. Um, I will show you this right now, and it's really amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Are we going to do the soap trick? Yes. Hey, yes. I, we have a video <laughs> on the soap trick, so, you know, get check us out. Do you guys have food coloring? There's more. No. I, no? Or, no, you know. Miranda, can you check on the shelf? We probably have some food coloring over there. I think we do. So if you don't want to waste um, coffee and you don't want to waste milk, there's a couple of fun tricks that you can use. And it, it's obviously not the same as using the real deal, but it definitely gives you a feel for how to... Um, I heard, will yellow and blue work? Or yeah, one oh yeah. I, I'm going to do blue because my name is Sapphire and, you know, <laughs> okay. let's do it. So um, using food coloring so, okay. instead of espresso will uh, make the contrast of, like the, like the espresso, for example. And you just mix it with a little bit of hot water. Okay. So, Let's do that. so, so about an uh, you know, a two ounce shot of espresso. Okay. And then you and take water. Water, again, and you, you got the 20 ounce pitcher yeah. and... And I've got any old plain dish soap. Okay. Don't drink this. Don't drink <laughs> Don't this. Don't drink this. You just use a couple of drops of soap. Mm-hmm. 
And, and then always when you practice, always go through the motions, yes. right? Always, always purge, always. always. So it just becomes a habit. So we're gonna I'm gonna steam this and it's gonna give me the exact same texture as milk. It's really cool. And I'm not wasting anything. And you can do this all day long. And your tip's gonna be really clean at the end. Right? <laughs> yeah, make sure I mean, you, you want to rinse it a little make bit. Make sure you purge it when you're done. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yep. So you give it the whole swirl and yeah, we get, we get and the latex I mean, look too. In the look at top. it, it looks exactly like milk. And it's not. <laughs> okay. And there's our blue espresso. Yep. Pretty cool. And I'm just gonna practice my pour. And it's a great method for new baristas at any bar or at home. I almost think my latte art's gonna be better with this. <laughs> <laughs> it does have tulip. a slightly softer quality. <laughs> it really does. I mean, I don't want to drink it, but no, it's absolutely. No, it's, it's, it has the aroma of lemon drops. <laughs> it kind of fits the season, I guess. It's a little, you know, it, it kind does. of looks like wintry. So. so that's a great way to practice your pours and practice. That's that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, look, we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. Um, Sapphire. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. For much. Having we're gonna me. have you back. I will remind you. Please subscribe. We're gonna be follow doing more of this. Follow me on Instagram. Yes, and follow uh, <laughs> the Rogue Barista. The Rogue Barista. I will show you some of her pores here just for a second while I tell you. So it's, there's there's some. Um, that was when I was in my heyday, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, don't don't forget again. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, check down below in the description. You can enter our $500 shopping spree there. That'd be great. And you know, if you, we do carry all the equipment that you saw in use here today. We carry that. Um, anything you buy at Whole Latte Love, uh, free shipping on orders over 50 bucks. Extensive support on the wiki and U.S. based. I know the guys are right <laughs> over on the other side of the wall who will take your call. If you got questions about equipment, before, after, during, whatever, they will help you out. Um, we're always here to help Definitely. you. Definitely. So. And if you guys ever have questions, feel free to reach out to me on my Instagram. Yeah. I'm always willing to answer questions. Yeah, you're very Instagram. active there. I aren't am you? pretty like, active yeah, there. It's, it's I'm really always on. Cool. So, again, thanks for watching. Sapphire, thanks. I want to Thank say thanks you. to Amanda, who's helping us out, Taylor, who's running the show, Sarah, taking the questions. Um, we'll see you back here soon for another live stream at Whole Latte Love. I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.